Uh, so this is part of the uh, University of Texas School of Architecture Lecture Lectures and Exhibition Series. Um, it's supported by the Lectures and Exhibition Committee uh, and Dean Addington. Uh, it's also sponsored by the Green Centennial Lectureship in Architecture. Um, and so my name is Eve Jones, I'm a Master's of Architecture student, and I have Rania Gosen and Elhadi Jazadi here with us today. Um, so maybe you guys could just start by um, telling your background, life background, um, maybe briefly, and then how you got into architecture and how you sort of developed an interest in geography um, adjacent to architecture or in tandem with architecture. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we're uh, founding partners of a practice called Design Earth. Uh, before that, we were founding members of a journal called New Geographies. And this is how we met. Um, and that journal asked designers to reflect on an expanded scale of agency that situates the architectural project in relationship to larger physical scales, but also to um, a legacy of looking at more complex questions of systems um, and territories. Uh, so that it uh, thinks of the architectural project not only as a uh, political tool to engage these questions, but begins to ask questions of uh, the proper formal repertoire through which we could think through that. So in that sequence of new geographies, uh, I added the issue number two called Landscapes of Energy, um, which particularly thinks of uh, the system of oil in relationship to sites of extraction, transportation, and then eventually urban settlements. Um, and then had the added issue number four, which is Caves of the Earth. And out of that collaboration came a first design research publication called Geographies of Trash, which kind of brought the larger systemic questions with questions of design agency at the larger scale. And our more recent book, uh, Geo Stories, which I'm sure we'll talk later about as well. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, representation, the role of representation is really central in uh, this question of how to re-articulate architectural question through geographic, is geographic framing. So uh, at the GSD first, but uh, then later through Design Earth, and uh, right now through our uh, academic uh, work in uh, both institutions uh, at MIT and uh, the University of Michigan, we try to see you know, how we could, through drawings and particular types of drawings, you know, capture microcosm, microcosms on a sheet of paper, uh, to quote uh, Van Humboldt. Okay. So within those illustrations, it seems like you're trying to claim externalities that you wouldn't otherwise see within some set system or a traditional way of looking at a system. Mm -hmm. um, and in doing so, it seems like you have to crop to a certain extent. So where do you define your crop? How do you set your system? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a very interesting question, is the question of scale. And so, so we, 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 uh, we usually, and in a very conventional way, in our discipline, if we are talking about architecture, urban design, urban planning, define first a scale and then an, inves an investigation of a particular issue. Yeah. We want to do it, we usually do it uh, the other way. So we define what is the, the issue, what's the significant issue, and then follow you know, the, the sort of uh, the site, through a site investigation, you know, what would be the sort of ideal site to be able to understand uh, you know, how this issue is relevant, how, is this, how, how the issue is transforming a particular context. Mm -hmm. So the idea of framing for us comes after we define a particular issue and uh, is related to uh, you know, the particularities of the issues that we are uh, looking at. So, so that's to give you to an example and remind us to, uh, we have a copy of Geographies of Trash, which is our first publication for the library here. But for example, in that one, the scale of the research was to be, um, it was found, funded within this uh, design research on the city initiative at the University of Michigan. And the test case for the first city was the city of Detroit. And we were interested in looking at questions of trash, which if you were to understand them in the context of Detroit, you would need to understand 
questions of uh, the flow from Canada to the U.S. because of lower tipping fee, looser environmental regulation. You also have to understand the logic of incinerators, which go around gathering waste from uh, further territories than Detroit. Um, and the, the, the broader landfilling strategy again, which use, crosses state lines in various ways. So to understand where the waste bag that originates in any household ends up, you end up looking at questions which are at a continental scale. To then eventually zoom in, in that case there were five strategies of intervention, um, somewhere at the scale of a singular landfill strategy, which has a kind of a clearer ziggurat form, Others were more at the scale of a block where you could sort and redistribute waste, and others were literally at the scale of the baseline of the state of Michigan, where you could think the organization of these sites along the transport infrastructure and situate them. So the issue of trash, and even if you're looking at it at a highly specific site, such as Detroit in this case, could have implications at multiple scales and hence multiple possible projects. Okay, and so there's a project like that which sort of has um, a proposed solution in a way, or a set trajectory, uh, mm -hmm. similar to um, Neck of the Moon, mm -hmm. another project that you guys worked on. So how do you guys differentiate projects like that and After Oil, which as, I'm, as far as I know is more just a, a projection of the future rather than, um, I guess, trying to show something actionable an actionable mm -hmm. procedure or design procedure on that system? Mm -hmm. Or is, is there no differentiation between the two? I, I, actually, the, the, the sort of the briefs of these questions were very different. So when we talk about geographies of trash, we are talking about a one-year research uh, within academic contexts with a sort of uh, you know, academic output and presentation, you know, research that is documented and that is transformed into speculation so that it could talk to architects, but also uh, designers and planners and environmentalists in the context of Michigan. Uh, if we're talking now about Neck of the Moon, this is a competition. This is the Jacques Rougerie competition that is looking at another set of uh, outputs that is looking at you know how can we uh, you know what could we uh, uh, how could we con contribute to outer space trash or space debris and how could architects maybe rethink you know ways in which we could uh, address you know the space debris and uh, so this is the context is a context of a competition. Is a is really sort of a, a totally different context, and um, so the output is you know a set of drawings that explains you know how architecture could contribute to the to the discussion. In the case of uh, the after oil, for example, mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, a context of a Venice Biennale, which is uh, you know which comes with a, a set of you know, expectations in terms of, you know, communication, in terms of, you know, setting what are the priorities for the practice, you know, setting, you know, what are the sort of, uh, uh, you know, relevant issues and how maybe architecture can start to tackle some of these issues. Mm. And after oil in particular, um, so that's a project we did in 2016, and that's probably one of the first in the series where we started to think of uh, both um, organizing one project into three discrete sites and then each site in itself being deployed into multiple, in this case a series of three drawings. So the total project is a series of nine drawings, each for one for each site. And this, there's spe three specific sites in that. One is a site of extraction at the uh, Das Island. Uh, the second is a site of the kind of logistics of transport, that's the Strait of Hormuz Grand Transport. And the third is a site of an oil spill or the longer kind of uh, rising of sea levels. And I think the tone, the speculative tone or the kind of projective tone of each of these projects is slightly different. So the first one does look at the relationship between um, the built up of the surface in terms of height and urbanization and the impoverishment of the deep soil. Um, but it also looks at the materiality of what is being excavated. So the project does have a kind of a, uh, almost in an earth art legacy, a proposal for 
the Age of Oil Museum, which actually takes up all the tailings of oil extraction, all the externalities, the undesired matter that are um, extracted at the same time as you're looking for oil, and accumulates that mass on the surface. So kind of a geologic earthwork in, in that respect. The second project, the Grand Chessboard, kind of has a, as a, almost a major urban <laughs> a speculative project that says if we were imagining that tension in real estate speculation, which is a it has an interesting name, oil futures, when you trade in oil, um, you can almost begin to imagine that these ch tensions might actually have a more continuous urban form because of a shared value of the economic overriding both. And it begins to say what would happen if some of these speculative projects would actually be deployed in, in this stage. Uh, the third project in that series has a very discreet kind of strategy, which is the uh, kind of a vertically inserted uh, uh, um, kind of wooden structure in an earth mound that would help to stabilize the soil of an otherwise receding island. So what you end up is, is rather than one continuous island, a kind of an archipelago of smaller withheld land soil around these specific highest 16 mounds. So almost by subtraction and by withholding some of the points, maintaining a certain you know, the, the territorial form uh, in, in, in the sea. But you're right in that maybe if, if that's very different from kind of a more bolder object strategy that the neck of the moon is, that actually builds up over time in almost a, almost a computationally aggregate form, where mm -hmm. you, know, you start with that module and that kind of uh, pyramid uh, kind of scales up, uh, uh, is deployed, uh, and then gives you a much clearer formal object. Mm -hmm. And that relationship between the object and otherwise kind of the field, be it in references to kind of the, the grid as a condition of, of the territory, the earthworks, uh, or kind of the singular, almost mundane artifact that gets redeployed, I think play out in that tension with the Neck of the Moon project. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. But in all these three projects, there is a, a same intention to use, inform to use information coming from research and uh, make, it uh, make it understandable through design. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's, it's really interesting to, uh, to be able to see how you know, research could be translated in representation modes that could make sense to non-designers, that mm -hmm. could uh, you know, uh, uh, be a sort of language understandable not only by researchers and people from uh, same disciplines, but also by a larger public and a larger audience. So, so you'd say that your audience isn't just architects in the field, in the field of planners, architects, the built environment, it is really everybody. And in that sense, do you ever draw inspiration from, say, science fiction, dystopian or utopian science fiction in any way? No, ab absolutely. I think uh, it's one of our uh, uh, central intention is to try to uh, take the information from our discipline and, and make it available through drawings and s through tr stories, you know. And uh, of course, you know, science fiction, science and science fiction, uh, science fiction are ex are very important tools for us to uh, try to talk about alternative worlds, alternative possibilities, speculative. Uh, design mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course you know we we are very much interested in uh, in uh, you know how to you know uh, dis disseminate alternative stories and how basically the stories you know they can carry uh, they, they, they can be you know important elements to uh, to uh, you know, give a sense of uh, visibility and presence to our design proposals. Yeah, there's a, in the book, GeoStories, there's a, a few projects where that becomes explicit. So in the a part We Are Together, for example, which kind of narrates the history of water infrastructure and water impoverishment in California, we draw on a few references, including the late uh, and great uh, Ursula Le Guin and her various works um, uh, in, in that context and both in, in her kind of fictional work and her writings which 
we found super inspiring while developing this project. And a later project was Murama, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, you get traces of Afrofuturism that start to think of alternative possible words, not both in kind of a sense of the uh, extraterrestrial, and kind of the legacy of thinking of outer space as the possibility of beginning anew, maybe in a more just social contract, but also in how that can land back on Earth. So I think there's various legacies uh, in uh, science fiction that are informative at, at in, in various uh, projects. But also in terms of drawings, for example, the work of uh, uh, Hugo Pratt, Hugo Pratt, who is an Italian uh, uh, Car cartoonist uh, is, is something that has inspired us a lot, or also uh, filmmakers such as Michelangelo Antonioni, uh, you know, are very important, or Godard, uh, you know, for ways of uh, telling a story through images, through montage, uh, you know, ways of creating layers of complexity through accumulation and uh, sort of articulation of images that are built in a sort mm -hmm. of contrast uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the challenge becomes once you multiply the number of frames and they're a lot tied together through some narrative structure, is how do you move from one frame to the other? Mm -hmm. How do you think of a totality, which is a storyboard, for example, or how do you think of a sequence from one image to the, to the other? Mm -hmm. And these are some of the questions that I think you know, now that we've had a series of uh, both for After Oil or for Cosmorama, kind of a sequence of nine drawings, we begin to think of how do you structure uh, a totality or how can you experience the totality in other ways as well. The totality being multiple projects placed together so that the externalities of one project or the internalities of one project, I guess, relate and are no longer externalities in the other project. Uh, that's one way. And another way is how do you think of the relationship between the text and the image? Because in our case, the, the text is more than a description, caption of the image. They actually have a sometimes more of a tension relationship between them. Uh, um, the text can be very uh, compact and political. Uh, the image could be more open and evocative. Mm -hmm. So how do you weave these different forms of evidence yeah, and, yeah, in particular, the, the Book of Images, which is the latest film of uh, Jean-Luc Godard, uh, talks about you know, how you know, one could use the multiple uh, you know, languages of cinema, music, sound, uh, images, uh, to, uh, uh, to construct a reality that is uh, extremely intricate. intricate and, uh, and so uh, we do not use images as illustration of the text. We use images to go against the text, mm -hmm. to give some sort of subtlety or another aspect of the text, uh, so that uh, the sort of the reader or the viewer is always uh, thinking, is always in a position of being an active, uh, uh, you know, viewer or reader, trying to. Uh, recombine in his mind uh, all of the elements of the puzzle that we are presenting. Uh, and what's the role of irony in that? It seems like if there's some discordance between text and image, then maybe there is irony or a looseness of in, in interpretation or... Uh... Yes, we, 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 th we think that there are multiple register for each language, you know, s poetry, uh, irony, uh, description, uh, description and, and we think that sometimes the best register is irony, uh, but uh, never cynicism. Uh, so we always take responsibility in whatever we sort of develop. And uh, so irony can be extremely uh, profound and, uh, and efficient, but sometimes also Surrealism can be can can help us uh, be unsatisfied with a with a response, but open other possibilities that are not presented but are, that are evoked. So yeah. so every uh, you know situations you know uh, uh, can lead to the use of you know multi some of these registers and 
irony is definitely a very important one. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to interview with us. And thank you. This thank, you. thank you for the awesome answers. Thank you. All right.